Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to take a jelly roll or a strip set and make a log cabin quilt. Come on in. Because we specialize in the log cabin pattern, we get a lot of requests from customers. They want to make a log cabin quilt from their jelly roll. So we have this really nice jelly roll that we cut, and this is called Too Cool. And we've already got one made up into the log cabin, so you can see the quilt here. Now these are using modern style prints. These are mostly free spirit designers. We've got Kay Facet, Philip Jacobs, Brandon Magley, even a little Tula Pink in here. And this is really nice. It's a nice throw size. So if you're trying to make a quilt for a younger person or you just don't want something that's old fashioned looking, this is just perfect. The strips are a little bigger. We used a really fun larger print on the back side. So I'm going to show you how to take your strip set and make this whole quilt. Got to go over to the workroom to do that. Follow me. The log cabin takes lights and darks or two different colors. So we're going to open this up and we're going to separate our pieces into two stacks, some lights and some darks. I'm going to use these in the light area, these in the darks, these in the lights, these in the darks. And we need to pick out one fabric for the center square. And I'm going to use this one because it's dark and it's a smallish print. The next step is to separate the darks into three stacks. So we're going to need six in each stack. So we've got one there, one there, one there, and we'll have a couple left over which we will work in at some point. Each one of these stacks is going to be cut into different size logs. This one is the center square. I like to cut four layers at a time, so I'm just going to fold this in half, and I'm going to cut this into two and a half inch squares. We only need 12 of them, so since it's four layers, I'm only going to need to cut this three times, and I will be done with the centers. We have this pattern as a free download, but since the writing is so small and you can't see it, I'm just going to rewrite it over here. We're going to take each one of these stacks, and from the first stack, we're going to cut 14 and a halfs, and we're going to cut four and a halfs. From the next stack, we are going to cut 12 and a halfs and six and a halfs, and the last stack, we're going to cut 10 and a halfs and eight and a halfs. You may need to take your strips and re-iron them before you cut them. These are laying nice and flat, so I'm just going to put a couple of them, I think I'll put three at a time, lined up really neatly, because I can cut six layers fairly easily. So I'm gonna lay those three out, and then I'm gonna put these three right up next to them, and I'm gonna cut them all at the same time, and that'll save a lot of time. Now, if you're not comfortable cutting this many layers, Take some off and do a few more cuts. First step is to make a nice neat cut here. I'm going to need a total of 19 inches, so I like to make sure that I've got 19. Oh, there's plenty. Okay, so we need 14 and a half for our first cut. It's going to be right here. Then we need four and a half, right here. Now we've got all those pieces cut. Now we're gonna continue on with this stack. We're gonna do the 12 and a half, six and a half, 14 and a half, oops, 10 and a half, eight and a half. Then we'll be done. I've got all the darks cut. Now we need to cut the light logs. They're a little bit different, so we're going to take 12 strips and we are going to cut a 12 and a half, a 10 and a half, an 8 and a half, and a 6 and a half from some of the pieces. So we're going to cut all these from 12 of the pieces. So I'm going to have to open these up. 
and then I will stack some on top of themselves so I can cut in bulk. So I'm going to make a couple of stacks here. So I'm lining it up very carefully and I'm going to stack up six here and then I'm going to stack up six more. So I've got a total of 12 lights here and we're going to cut the same pieces out of all of them. So I'm going to cut a 12 and a half and a six and a half out of this half of the strip. Then I'm going to make a fresh cut and cut my 10 and a half and my eight and a half. That way I don't have to use these folds that come in the middle of the jelly roll. They're not always real accurate right in the folded area. The ones we cut, they're cut straight, they're no elbows, they're cut really perfect. But once in a while you'll find a jelly roll strip that's got a little bit of an elbow in it. So we try to avoid using the middle of the jelly roll there. So let's cut this here. There's the 12 and a half. There's the six and a half. Now I'm going to skip over this lumpy part here, make a fresh cut. We'll do a ten and a half and an eight and a half. The last cutting step is to take two strips and cut some four and a halfs and some two and a halfs. So these will be the last pieces we need so that we can make all of our blocks. Now that we've got all the pieces cut, we can take them over to the sewing machine, get to sewing. I've pulled off all of the pieces for one log cabin block here and laid them out. They're cut exactly to the lengths we need. It doesn't look like it because they've got the seam allowances added, so you can't actually fit them together right now. But we're going to start in the middle and we're just going to add pieces around and around and around. So this is the order we're going to be sewing in. So I like to pick them up in that order. And now we're ready to make the one block. So we've got the center seat, the center piece here, and the first light, and they're they're exactly the right length. So if we use a quarter inch seam, everything is going to fit exact. Now, since they're cut on the crosswise grain or the width of the fabric, they won't finger press really flat. So I just do a little teeny bit to make sure that that seam allowance is going away from the center. All my seam allowances are going to go away from the center. So just match up all your pieces. If you use the exact quarter inch seam allowance, each piece that you fit on will fit exact. And that's what you want. So we're gonna give it a quarter turn every time. Open it up a little, the next piece will fit on exact. You just continue all the way around the square, adding pieces all the way around. So after every strip, turn it, same direction every time, open it up, seam allowance is going away from the center, and add the next piece. Sews really, really fast. I've got my last two darks here. You can see how nicely they fit on. And it's really easy to sew these pieces that are cut on the width of the fabric. They have a little bit of give. It makes it really, really easy to sew. It's a little bit harder to iron, but real easy to sew. So this is the last dark, and you can see how nice and scrappy it turned out. show you how to iron these blocks because there is a knack to getting these blocks ironed. So I've got all my seam allowances going away from the center. So what I'm going to do is take my iron and I'm not going to just press it down on here. I'm just going to try to head for this piece right here and I'm going to pull this open just a little and I'm going to then put the rest of the iron down. Same thing going this direction. Pull this away a little and get the very middle. Same thing towards the sides. So I'm just going to press it down here a little in the middle and pull away. Once you've got those heading the direction you want, 
put the iron in the middle and take this far corner and give it a little bit of tension and that will pull all of these seams the way they're supposed to go and it'll make everything straight. So start in the middle, a little diagonal pull here. Now if we flip it over we'll see it's pretty square and true and there's no divots in here and now we're just going to make sure everything looks a little straight. You can see it's a little pulled out of shape here which will happen so you're going to ease it back into shape make sure everything looks nice and square and there's no fold overs like that everything is open then we'll put the steam on very flat very nice you won't have to square them up that block is done now that i've showed you how to make one entire block let me show you the method i'm going to use for the rest of the quilt it's always a good idea to make one block first so you know what the pieces look like, you know that they're all going to fit. <coughs> but I'm actually going to chain piece everything, so I'm going to take the center square and the first light and I'm going to sew them together like this, every piece, the whole stack. So I'll do just a couple blocks to show you what I'm talking about. Put these right sides together and take the first pieces here and stitch all of them. You want to leave a little thread between each block so that when you snip them apart, your stitches don't come out. So I would continue to do that for all of the center squares and all of the small pieces for the whole quilt. And then I'm going to snip them apart, stack them up, give them that turn, and then I'm going to open this up and take the next piece and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the whole stack and it won't matter what light goes on next. It won't matter at all in these early parts around the block. So just continue on like this with all of the pieces. Again, leave it on the machine and do the whole 12 blocks. This will save you a lot of time. Now you can see all the log cabin blocks with all the variety of the different prints in here. It has a really nice scrappy look. And when you're sewing it together, you don't need to worry too much about what is gonna be next to what. There's only a few pieces of each fabric in here. So unless you end up with two blacks or blues or oranges right next to each other, don't worry about it too much. So here's the block. Let's see, shaped like that. Really a fun quilt to make, it goes really fast. And remember, Use something fun on the back side. We've got this nice K facet print. Really makes your quilt reversible. Now, if you want a more traditional batik looking quilt, we've made another one here. This is the exact same pattern. More traditional log cabin where you've got all the dark colors grouped together and all the light ones. Not a lot of color change. Really pretty batiks. These are all Hoffman and Robert Kaufman batiks. And it just gives a completely different look. So if you have a purple jelly roll and it ha doesn't have any lights, you can cut a few lights of your own. The, the pattern sews together really fast. Got another fun print on the back of there, a little geometric. So it only took one jelly roll. We used three quarters, a half, and a yard for the outside borders here. And it ended up 62 by 76, which is a generous throw size. Thanks for watching our video today and be sure to leave us comments or ask us questions. We'll try to answer all those and give us your requests for quilts you want to see next.